Well, I'm only able to connect six out of the eight batteries today without going on a long drive away to get battery terminals. I went back to town. I went to four different shops. I went to an electrical supply, a hardware uh, place. I went to tractor supply. And I went to a lumber yard. And nobody had the large crimp on terminals that I need and I'm only short four terminals from finishing my job properly and I am not going to uh, rig this up I'm gonna do this one properly so there's no halfway here no temporary I'm doing this upright I'm not gonna be undoing my wiring again once I'm done so then I uh, We'll just have to hook up the other two batteries. Next time I go to town and get the parts, I'll hook up the next two, the other two batteries then. And uh, that'll be it. But at least tonight we will have power in the tiny house and wheels again. Now, my uh, water pump kill switch has been outside, and I want to take it inside. That's another thing I'm changing. Because if you run out of water in an emergency, then you've got to run outside. This is plus. So I've got the uh, negative over here on the end of this set. And I'm going to check with my voltmeter, make sure I got my uh, voltages right and my connections right before I hook up the solar charge controllers inside. This is the wire going to the solar charge controllers. So what I should have here is a main negative 12 volt battery and a main positive of the 12 volt battery. I've got 12.76 volts overall across the entire battery system. So I'm going to hook this one up and it'll have the power going to the solar charge controllers. And then I can hook up the solar panels. And then the next step will be hooking up the. I should have made it. Oh, yeah, that'll work. There, it's a little bit of a spark. We've got power there. The next step will be hooking up the power to the house. So everything's separate. You've got your power going to your charge controllers, which, well, the line going to your charge controllers, which is in your solar feeding the battery bank. And then you've got your line powering the house is a separate line which I'm going to run in a few minutes here. So there's that. Now I'm going to go in and I should have the solar charge controller should have a reading on them. And yes, we have it's showing 12.8 volts and nighttime 67 degrees. So we are good. For now I've run two wires in from the solar panels to the charge controller. Let me take you inside and show you that. It's getting colder, but it was uh, 70 degrees today, and uh, it's five o'clock in the afternoon, just turned five. And I've been working literally all day on this. Let me show you what I got going on now. Of course, we just got clouds. Um, now that I finished the solar, we've got just under 100 watts, seven amps coming in. Charging the batteries, 13.1 volts under charge, but uh, there was full sun all day. And now that I got the batteries hooked up, we've got um, clouds. But anyway, um, let that charge, and I'm going to now hook up the power inverter in the tiny house on wheels, which is sitting here. And I've got the positive wire hanging in. I don't have the negative wire in yet. Uh, so I'm still I still got a lot to do. Get the power inverter here, and then I'm going to run the main house uh, electrical plugged into here. So branching off the power inverter. So this will come to the inverter, and then from there into the house, which is only a 10 gauge wire that powers the house. Anyway, because I don't pull much. This is DC power. I don't pull much DC power through the house. 
so the AC I've got heavy heavy duty double zero gauge I think that's double zero um, I think that's double zero it's metric this is from Goliath man so it's in metric I think that's double zero yeah it is because the uh, terminals had to be double zero to even fit that so there's really heavy duty large wire and that's going to go into the power inverter and then from there to the DC powering house. Now I've got 4 gauge going into the solar charge controller and branching off. That's the original 4 gauge that I had and then goes on out the house. So I've shortened that wire considerably. That's less than 3 feet now. And oh, maybe about 3 feet. And then the same with this. It's going to be about 3, 3.5 feet long. So I've really shortened out the wires by taking it out from under the sink and bringing the battery bank and wiring over to here. So big difference on power. It's, I'm sure it's going to be a huge improvement on the, uh, the power here in the tiny house on wheels. Now the 4 gauge is enough because all I've got maximum coming out of there I think is going to be 20 amps ever at any given time coming out of the solar charge controller. So that little 4 gauge wire is easily going to handle the 20 amps for a three foot span, four foot span up to the solar charge controller. So that'll easily handle the 20 amps going through there. All right, I've got the power inverter connected inside the tiny house on wheels. And now I'm about to connect the final wires. So this is to the power inverter. Now I've got the heavy, heavy wire going to the inverter. And then I've got the four gauge, I think I explained this a bit ago go into the solar charge controller because uh, the current should be fine for that. So now I've got the charge controller putting voltage, putting uh, power into this negative terminal so the power inverter is going to connect to the opposite negative terminal. So we are taking in are putting in and pulling out current from two different sides of the battery of the battery bank trying to be neat here with my wires and not get in the way of the filler necks, the filler caps later on. Alright, I've got the negative. Now the positive taps off the other end of this battery bank. So it's opposites. And I'm going to double check it with a voltmeter before I connect it and make sure that I don't mess up my directions here. So we basically have uh, power from the solar panels 13.50 volts and reverse our leads here and we've got the positive here and the negative here going into the house 13.50 volts. All right, so when I put that on, it's probably going to spark a lot because the power inverters capacitors have massive, or make a massive surge. I hate doing that. I really hate connecting them. for the spark. Oh, I dread that part. I always dread that. Snap! Oh, I hate that. It makes me jump every time. You probably didn't see it because the, uh, I was blocking with my arm. Boy, I hate that. Those inverters, it's off. Those inverters snap when you collect them. Okay. 
Now, we should have power inside the house all the way around. So let's go in. If the toilet fan is running, then we know we've got power running in the house. Yes, the fan is running. So we've got lights. All right. We have power inside the tiny house on wheels. And the power inverter should be able to turn on. Baby cat is here saying hi. Power inverter should be able to turn on. Now what I've done is I've tied, I've got the plus and minus here going into the inverter to heavy gauge wire. And then I've got my 10 gauge wire, uh, 6 gauge wire, sorry, 6 gauge wire. I didn't think 10 was right. I said 10 earlier, I'm sorry about that. This is 6 gauge wire running through the entire tiny house on wheels. And uh, that is more than sufficient for the power that I draw. This is the only DC power coming out of the tiny house or going into the tiny house. So power inverter kicks on, good and happy. Um, the good test is then now to fire up my internet and my computer and uh, answer some comments. So we've got clouds. It's uh, 113, 114 watts. It's really fluctuating. We got clouds now. But 13.7 volts, charging, happy times. Everything's back to normal, except that we have shorter wires and a lot less loss in the lines in the tiny house on wheels. And I'm going to tie my uh, pipes up, tie my wires down, secure everything. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a couple pieces of 2x6, and I want to have the inverter off the, the ground to separate it from the dust zone a little bit better. And then... I want to, I'm going to build a box to close all of this area in, and then Melanie can put some stuff on top of it if she wants. But I want to close up basically all that you see here, all of these wires. You'll see the charge controllers, but all the wires from here down and all the plumbing is eventually going to be covered up and hidden to protect it from uh, accidents and from cats. So, I'm going to take a little break because now I have power going. Um, I still have to hook up the water pump to the fuse block, which I'm also going to move. Um, probably not yet today because we're running, it's, we're running short on time today. But I'm probably going to take the fuse blocks and move them over here. All right, and the, ne the main negative terminal, the main positive terminal, I want to run it all over here. And... Uh, the fuse blocks over here inside the protective housing that I'll, I'll build. And then that'll probably be another day or after dark tonight. But for now, i got to get on the internet and take a little break. I've been working all day on this. It's quite a project. More than I thought. Got the little birdies outside eating grass. Hi, guys. Look at them. Friendly little guys. They do love us. They are friendly little birds. Melanie has spent a lot of time with them. So, they've been outside today, uh, most of the afternoon. And we'll take them in as soon as it starts to cool off a little bit. We'll take them inside. We've cleaned their cage. Now Melanie cleaned their cage while I was working on the electrical. And um, they've got some fresh air and some fresh greens. And uh, this was their first time out ever. Little guys and girls. So... They're chirping excitedly because they want to get close to me. I think they want to go back in. But they had an adventure and they were they had some fun. So there's the birdies. 